Hey friends, it's Marlon Gibbons. Thank you for joining me here in the studio again this week. Um, two things off the top. I'm noticing a lot more engagement in the last few videos that I've done, uh, whether it be comments, likes, subs, direct messages, all that kind of thing, um, more so than any of the other videos I've done. And well, I've always said I, I don't want to be a how-to channel. I, I, didn't, um, I didn't start this to, for it to be an educational channel. I do want to share my experiences with you in, in that if, if I can offer things that have helped me and, and I can offer them and share them with you and they help you, then I'm okay with that. Um, but what I don't want is I don't want to be perceived as a, that I'm trying to sell you anything or that, that, you know, there's no courses, there's no money. I'm not redirecting you to my website to buy my music or anything like that. I just want to share with you, um, tips and tricks that have helped me along the way and if they help you awesome I'm gonna kind of keep going down this path with the tips and tricks and then things that you know help you get your music into libraries um, and the second thing is if you're enjoying these these videos please subscribe um, of course I want to have a successful channel as well and, and grow that channel and, and reach out to more of you and, and help you get your music out there and into libraries and and uh, media and that kind of thing so stick around As I said before, you know, I want to share with you things that have worked for me and, and haven't worked for me. So today's topic is one of these things that um, I've had more success with my compositions um, when I do this than when I don't. And that is uh, fusing or, or incorporating real instrumentation, authentic instrumentation into my otherwise sample library type cues. Um, whether it's orchestral or whatever, it's, it's not really about the sample library you're using. It's, it's that if you can infuse real recorded with a microphone type instruments, um, whether it's percussion or, or guitar or, um, or just weird sound design type stuff. Um, in my experience, it's made my compositions more, um, sought after more placeable, um, more interesting definitely and uh, I've had more success with my compositions when I tend to do that okay so I just want to clarify first is that a lot of you are already set up with say an acoustic drum kit in your studio or maybe a few amps of your favorite amps are all mic'd up ready to go and um, so this is not a new concept to you uh, but hang in there because I'll get to talking more about fusing the, that real instrumentation in with your your um, sample library compositions so uh, hang in there but I really wanted to I guess focus on most of you that work primarily with sample libraries so this is about how to fuse real instrumentation in with that it doesn't have to be this this big elaborate recording session um, I'll get to it in a minute but I'll show you some really cool examples that that just um, just give a whole new twist on your otherwise all-in-the-box compositions Hopefully there's value to all of you, um, but a lot of you that work just with specific libraries, um, this is a cool way to kind of give a new voice to that library um, so that everybody else who's bought that same library as you, uh, that you're not all sounding exactly the same. Okay, so I'm not suggesting you go out and buy a ton of expensive equipment, although that would be great, wouldn't it, if budget wasn't a concern? Consider what you have already. Um, maybe you have a, a small amp or something like that. It doesn't have to be this this crazy expense. Um, and what I mean by that is just a few things I have here that are kind of more of the percussion world. Um, I have a, a, a real triangle that I paid, I think, $6 off Amazon. Um, so you can get some of that stuff. Um, what else? I have uh, the old uh, mouth harp. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Um, not that I would use that in a lot of compositions, but hey, maybe sound design, right? Um, what else? So, kabasa, uh, the real thing. Uh, and it's just, you may have, yeah, you probably do have uh, samples that will sound very similar. However, when you record this live, you're kind of putting your own fingerprint, uh, your own DNA into that that sound. You're You're capturing also aside from the instrument is the the character of your room uh, the microphone you're using maybe the gear or preamp or EQ or anything you're running through so it's really gonna sound um, 
you know, sonically, it will sound different than, than a sample. Um, and you could stereo mic it, or you could mic it close, you could mic it far. So you have a lot more control that way. Um, that's just one example. Um, the other thing is I've done some Christmas type um, uh, compositions. I have a ton of bells here, just a couple. Again, I think $3 on Amazon, just a, a bell stick. Um, real sleigh bells, um, a little tambourine. The thing with bells is that um, in certain genres, there's only so many um, samples that are that that have a specific sound, and they become you know especially during that season they become very identifiable. Um, you kind of want to avoid that 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 having your sample library identified, um, and a lot of music supervi supervisors have golden ears when it comes to that kind of stuff. Uh, music libraries as well, obviously, because um, they hear it a lot. So. Try and create your own sounds if that's possible. Um, this is, again, just one example, but real bells because everybody has the same kind of um, sounds when it gets to more of a unique thing. Um, I guess another thing too would be um, cymbals, uh, swells and that kind of thing. I have, um, I, I borrow a lot of, of different cymbals depending on what I'm working on, but swells and crashes um, and even just simple percussion stuff. I have a ton of different drumsticks and mallets and that kind of thing. Um, I've created my own small small library, but my own samples for that. So it's certain swells and, and swooshes and, and that kind of thing. Um, I, I throw in the real thing when I can. Not all the time, but um, as often as I can. Um, chimes, wind chimes. I have a stereo miking collection of that as well as just mono. Um, and again, it's it's what I've recorded in this room, so it's it's not going to be found in any library. What else? Um, I have a, a kazoo. I, it's plastic. It's literally $2. Um, uh, an Ebo. Now, this is a little bit more expensive, um, but an Ebo creates some great sounds and tones with that, uh, with the guitar. Um, other things I have that have been in the family for years is... is um, I have, you know, dobro, banjo, uh, a couple mandolins, a couple of fiddles. Um, I'm not incredible as a musician on any of those instruments. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't go out in public and play play the violin, for example. Um, I, just, I don't have that skill set. However, here in the studio, um, I can play some really simple stuff, some some maybe staccato passages, um, some long drawn out lines with some vibrato. Um, enough that I can add to the compositions I'm working on and add, add multiple layers of, of said instrument, whatever that happens to be. Uh, and again, it just adds more character, you know, with an acoustic guitar. Um, another example would be I have a, I guess, somewhat of a Frankenstein drum kit. Uh, I have a kick drum, a couple floor toms, and, uh, and uh, you know, hi-hat and that kind of thing, and I have a, a couple snares. So what I'll do is bring in piece by piece. Depending on what I'm working on, I'll bring it in a piece by piece. Uh, maybe it's just a tom roll that I'm working on, or, or maybe I'll combine that with a, a timpani roll. Maybe just use, maybe replace a sampled hi-hat with, with a real hi-hat. Um, th these ideas can go on and on all day, but the point is they're just subtle ideas that can, they're not featured instruments, but they can um, support and augment your otherwise sample-based uh, compositions. Okay, so just a couple more things. Um, resources. I get that a lot of you are veterans at recording, you know your stuff inside out, um, but those of you who are just kind of new to it, um, maybe you want to learn a bit more about mixing or, or miking techniques, um, how, to how to go about getting a nice clean sound and that kind of thing. Um, it takes time to learn these things, but if you want some great resources, I would highly recommend Warren Hewitt, Produce Like a Pro. Uh, I'll put I'll put their links in the description. Um, Joe Gilder Music uh, is another one, uh, and Graham Cochran. I think Recording Revolution is another one. Uh, most of my viewers probably know who all three of these guys are, but those of you who don't check out their site or their channels, um, I don't know these guys personally. Uh, I've never really dealt with them. I just know that they have incredible channels, and I think what makes their channels so cool, so great, is that they're really down to earth guys, and they. they talk like we're all on the same level, which, which is, I think, how to really engage with people. Uh, I myself am still learning and always learning, um, and we may all be at different levels, 
but we're all in the same game, right? So um, I would highly recommend any of those three guys. They all have great content and it's just easy to understand, great stuff, great techniques and practices and and, uh, and that kind of thing. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was that, uh, back, to, back to the music part of it, other things that you can do to create um, you know, more of a unique sound for your compositions. Um, I mean, that's the whole point of this is that adding authentic or real instrumentation into your, um, your you know, augmenting your sample based compositions is that you want to create a unique sound that, that somebody else isn't going to necessarily really have um, because it doesn't exist in the sound library. You're creating it. Um, so another, another component of that is sound design. Um, and or maybe a remix. So take your finished stereo file and, and maybe you can um, do like a you know a glitch or techno kind of remix to it. Um, you can run different filters on it. Um, you know it's just it's adding something else to it that 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 it's it's really your signature that you're creating your own sound with it and it, and it makes it more interesting. You know sit back when you've finished your your composition and and listen to the whole thing or maybe take a day or two to get away from it and get some fresh ears and come back and listen to it sonically. Just sit back and say, what could I do to either add or create, um, you know, a unique sound to whatever it is you're doing? You know, will this, will this guarantee you access into a library? Um, nope, not at all. But in my experience, the, the compositions where I've added, um, or fused real instrumentation in with it, even if it's just something simple like adding real bass guitar under a you know a trailer track, it's just enough to to give it a, a its own tone, its own thumbprint. So anyway, guys, I hope you found that helpful. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I would really appreciate that, and that would help me get out to even more of you. Um, and as always, I'm just I'm happy to share what what I've learned. Take whatever you want that you feel is of value and disregard the, the rest. But uh, I'm happy that you're here watching and, uh, and thank you so much for the support. We'll see you next week, friends. Cheers.